Never before and never again could anything more romantic and beautiful be. Never before and never again could anything more romantic and beautiful be. Never before and never again could anything more romantic and beautiful be. No two people have ever been so in love. 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 Incredible, no two people have ever been so in love. Been so is my lovey dove and I. No two people have ever moon such a moon. Moon such a moon. June such a June. June such a June. June such a June. What he means is that no two people have ever been so in tune. Been so is my macaroon and I. And when we kiss. And when we kiss. Oh, when we kiss. It's like this. Well, it's hysterical. It's historical. Let me tell it. Be my guest, dear. No two people have ever been so in love. 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 It's impossible no two people have ever been so in love. Been so is my love because I'm not. This is the cream, the very extreme, the sort of a dream you couldn't imagine at all. This is unique, a positive peak, oh, we are the most unusual couple on earth. Never before and never again could any. Anything more romantic and beautiful. No two people have ever been so in love. That's terrific. You know, you two ought to sing professionally. Yeah, I can see it now. The singing crop duster. And friends. Say, you know, I could call my agent and ask him to book you. Well, thanks, Billy Joe, but there is just one little thing. And uh, that's the one little thing. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. Just as we were about to become the new Jeanette and Nelson. This is the cannonball. I wonder if Janet's on it. What do you think? Wendell must be using up all his pressure. Well, let's not just stand here. Let's go and greet her. Right, yeah. It'll be great to have a bath. Yeah. Huh? Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Bobby. After you left, I cut my finger whittling. Is that healing all right? Oh. Uncle Joe, she just barely arrived. I'm just showing her that I'm loyal and didn't run off to another dog. That might have charged you. Yeah, that might have. <laughs> well, that was only part of it. It's healing beautifully, and you look fine. In fact, you all look just fine. <laughs> Why, thanks. <laughs> oh, thanks, Steve. Oh, don't mention it. How's that adorable baby? Well, the last I heard, she was in great voice. I can't wait to see her. <laughs> Let's go up to the hotel. All right. <laughs> Uh, you coming too, Wendell? Might as well. I can't go any place anyhow. I used up all the steam on that whistle. <laughs> Welcome home, Jan. Oh, my. You know there isn't any place that's as homey and comfortable as this. Measures right up the New York hotels, huh? Measures right up there, Joe. Hi, Janet. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, golly, Kathy Joe just dropped off to sleep. Oh, well, then I'll see her in the morning. Doing well, is she? Beautifully. Okay, everybody, come on. So glad you're home, dear Jan. So glad you're home. We miss you all the while. So glad you're home, dear Jan. So glad you're home. We don't have any more words. <laughs> oh, that's marvelous. That's the way we really feel. Well, you certainly do make it difficult for a person. What do you mean? I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm going to be leaving. Leaving? Hey, hey, no. You can't leave. We need you here. You're part of the family. Yeah. You're just getting going. You built up a pretty good route. Well, Joe, it ain't like she was delivering papers. <laughs> well, she understands. Point is, she started a good doctoring business here, and it'll improve. Why, I was just waiting until you got back to get sick. <laughs> Thank you all, and thank you, Wendell. But I'm afraid my mind is made up. Now, this isn't just a spur-of-the-moment decision. I've been offered the opportunity to work with one of the world's greatest neurologists, Dr. Pope. Oh, that was going to be my specialty before I elected to go into general practice. 
And I thought it was all behind me, but... But this sort of a thing just happens to be the chance of a lifetime. So you're thinking it over, huh? Uncle Joe. I'm just giving her an out. I'm sure you must know how difficult a decision this was to make. I hope you understand. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. Okay, you can go. <laughs> something we can do. Hmm? Well, about Janet's leaving. Well, I don't know what it could be. It sounded pretty definite last night. I know. Part of your airplane? Oh, no, something much more important. My fishing rig. <laughs> well, help me think, Steve. What could we do to keep Janet here? Import an epidemic. <laughs> yeah, that does seem a little drastic. I'm serious about this. I don't want her to go. Well, I don't either, honey, but... I think we're waging a losing battle. I know. I could tell her that Kathy Joe needs her and that changing doctors would be a psychological shock to her. Are you sure about that? No, but it kind of sounds impressive, doesn't it? Yeah, it impressed me. But uh, isn't that being a little deceitful? Yes, it is deceitful and underhanded and dishonest. But do you think it'll work? <laughs> well, I'm getting desperate. And I feel that somewhere we must have failed. You know, people have to think that they're wanted and needed. Well, I thought we had indicated that. Mm, but maybe it hasn't gotten through to her yet. And when she gets here, I'm going to spell it out. Janet, before you make your final decision, there's one thing I want to make very clear to you. Every one of us here in the Valley needs you and wants you. That just might do it. I don't see how I can miss. Oh, that could be Janet now. Hi, Jim. Hi, Hi Steve. Oh, don't get up. Well, I can't wait to get my hands on you-know-who. Before you check over Kathy Jo, uh, please, would you sit down for a minute? All right. Thank you. May I say something to you? You can say anything you like to me, as long as it doesn't have anything to do with my leaving. <laughs> Look, at breakfast today, your sisters told me how they hated to see me leave and how wanted and needed I am. Well, by the time they were through, I was practically crying in my cereal. I'm sure you understand. Yes, of course. You were saying? Uh, I like the outfit you're wearing. Oh, thank you. Uh, Kathy Joe's in here. All right. Honey, I'm leaving. Oh? Where are you going? Well, I've got a date with some trout. I, uh... Just want to let them know that they're wanted and needed. Here to go, Junction will return after these messages. What's the matter? Wait a minute. This may be it. This may be what was wrong with my putting grip. Oh, for crying out loud. Don't talk when a man's putting. There it is. There's your answer right there. That's what you missed. Yeah, but this time I missed a lot closer. Oh, boy. Sam, I owe it all to you. If it hadn't been for that peculiar little hollow back of your right ear there, which calls for the overlapping grip. I never would have come up with this. Well, speaking on behalf of my ear, we're delighted. Now, will you get back and finish the job? Sam, you don't understand. This is very important. We're moving into the age of leisure. Look, and this article over here tells all about it. With automation, we're going to have a lot more time on our hands. We've got to figure out what to do, like reading and sports and romance. Romance? Well, you can strike that one. But the point is, there's a knack to being idle, and you've got to prepare for it. Hi, fellas. Speaking of being prepared, here's the king. He's been in training for 40 years. What are you talking about? This article here. The age of leisure and how to prepare for it. Oh, well, that's not for me. Drive me batty sitting around with nothing to do. What's the matter? 
Well, if a bolt of lightning strikes, I don't want to be too close to you. Hey, hey, that's pretty good. You get it, Joe? You said it could drive you batty sitting around with nothing to do, and Bert said, he, he said... Oh, forget about it. This ain't no time for laughing. We've got a problem. Doc Craig's moving back to the city. Moving back? Oh, yeah, I would have mentioned it, but Bert got me sidetracked with that stupid golf gadget. What you moving back for? Oh, I don't know. It's something about a better offer, chance of a lifetime. But you know women, they don't need much of a reason to do something. Chance of a lifetime? That's some inducement. Yeah, yeah, but we need her here. She's become part of the valley. That's true, Joe. She fits in real well. Yeah, she'd be real hard to replace. Hi, everybody. Oh, Joe, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to need your help. What is it, Wendell? Ted Thorson, the ranger. I have him on the cannonball, and I'm taking him to the Shady Rest to see Dr. Craig. What's wrong? He had a fall on Mount Grundy, injured his ankle. Come on, Joe, he'll need a hand getting up to the Shady Rest. Okay. Cancel my appointment, will you, Bert? <laughs> right. No checkers today. <laughs> hey, this could work out all right. What do you mean? This ranger is a pretty good-looking fella, ain't he? Well, if you like the big outdoors type, personally... Well, I'm not thinking about you. <laughs> what if Doc Craig should kind of fall for him? Huh? Oh, no. Docs can't fall for their patients. That's not allowed. they got to be impersonal. It's all spelled out in that hypocritical oath. <laughs> These are my nieces, Billy Joe and Bobby Joe. This is Ted Thorson. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. Ted is the forest ranger at the Mount Grundy station. Yeah, he hurt his ankle. Is Doc Craig here? Oh, yeah, she's here. She? What didn't I mention? Doc Craig is a lady. No, you didn't. Look, maybe I better go into Pixley and see Doc Stewart. Oh, we recommend Dr. Craig highly. She's very good. Anyway, Doc Stewart's semi-retired. You can't do better than Doc Craig. Doesn't look like I've got much chance of even trying. I know what you're thinking. First, I didn't go for a lady pill peddler. So if you don't want to... What's the matter? Oh, Bobby Joe, would you get me some boxes? This packing up is quite a chore. Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, this is Dr. Craig. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> hello there. Well, hello. You heard his ankle. He wants us to take him over to Doc Stewart's. Oh, no. I mean... I wouldn't think of putting you out. That is, I'm sure Dr. Craig is very capable. Well, thank you. Why don't you come inside? Let me take a look at you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Doctor. You can sit right down over here. Ted Thorson. Your address? Mount Grundy Ranger Station, Hooterville County. Age? 37. Okay, 41. <laughs> Married? Uh-uh. Are you? I beg pardon? <laughs> this seems to be one-sided. You get to ask all the questions. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Oh, you are the patient, you know. And who's the doctor? And that gives me the right to ask questions. After all, I am in your hands. Okay, I'm single. Anything else? Nothing important. Oh, yeah. Where'd you go to school? Why? Well, I'd like to know what kind of grades you got. I mean, if I'm to be treated, I'd like to have a doctor that got AIDS. <laughs> How do I know? Maybe you flunked ankles. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Over there, please. I'll take a look at you. Why, this seems to be fine. I hope so. It's the other one I heard. <laughs> so then she took 
him into Pixie for his x-rays and then brought him back here. He's staying up in room number eight. Well, that sounds encouraging. Oh, I'll say. Of course, with doctors, you don't know. It could be strictly a professional interest. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> oh, hi, Betty Jo. Hi. This is for our new patient. Eggs, sausage, flapjacks, grapefruit, orange juice, muffins. Well, we want him to stay. You can't say we're not doing our part. You sure can. <laughs> Good morning, Billy Joe. Oh, is that for Ted, our patient? That's right. Well, why don't I take it up to him? Oh, no, that's okay. I don't mind. Oh, but I want to. I mean, I might as well. I have to take a temperature anyway. Oh, well, in that case... <laughs> Bobby Joe, just because she's taking his tray up to him? No. Because this is the third time this morning she's gone up to take a temperature. Ted, it's your move. Huh? It's your move. Oh, yeah. I need to tell you this, Ted. Checkers just ain't your game. Hmm? I said checkers ain't your game. I guess you're right. Checkers takes a certain amount of concentration. Yeah. He's always keeping me here. But he seems to be progressing satisfactorily. But you never can tell you. Well, that's why I'm waiting for the x-rays. They should come today. And if, as I anticipate, they show no complications, then I'll be on my way. Medical Junction will return... information and he's not supposed to look at it. Joe, <gasps> sure, right? The x-rays on Ted Thorson, I'm supposed to deliver them directly to Dr. Janet Craig. Oh, what's a little detour? <laughs> hey, this is terrific. This guy's a mess. <laughs> look, we're in. How'd you have to stay here to take care of him? Uh-oh. What's the matter? Well, if he's a mess, this sure don't show it. It's from the lab to Dr. Craig. It says everything's just fine. There's no break at all, not even a hairline. Hey, Sam, loan me your marking pencil. What for? Draw in a couple of cracks. <laughs> Who's to know him besides us? Joe, she's a doctor. She went to medical school. Yeah, and there's a reasonably good chance they taught her how to tell the difference between a real break and one made with a marking pencil that you used to put prices on cans. <laughs> yeah, but without x-rays to prove he's injured, she'll let Ted go and that'll lower chances of keeping him here. Wait a minute. Why does she have to see that x-ray? Remember the accident my Uncle Fred had in the park and he collected the insurance? Well, I still got his x-ray on that. That's terrific. Think of that, Burton. We'll let Wendell take that one over to her. Oh, I don't know. It sounds sort of underhanded. I'm not sure if I can. Well, forget it. We'll let Sam take it over. <laughs> Located, Bert? It's here somewhere. Because years ago, I promised Mother I'd never practice anything to see. <laughs> you know, this was a very historic case. Made old Irv Simpson stop selling shirts. Tell you how it happened. 
My Uncle Fred took out a policy in June. By golly, he had the action on the 4th of July. <laughs> Lucky old Fred. <laughs> it isn't that I don't want Janet Craig to stay here, but I question these methods. Here, let's look at it. Oh, is that a view? I can't tell a thing from that. Me neither. But he's collecting $300 on it. That's good enough for me. Come on, let's go. Well, Joe, you can't. Are you coming? Of course. It's my uncle's x ray, isn't it? <laughs> I guess by now I've just got so in the habit of being honest. But even if I wanted to, I couldn't. I just. <laughs> Oh, no! Oh, this is the real one here. Now, let me handle this. She's leaving. Well, don't be too sure. Take a reading on that, Doc. Oh, thank you. This is your x-ray. Hmm. Pretty bad, huh, Doc? Bert and I looked at it, and even with our layman's eye, we could see it was loaded with fractures. Right, Bert? Yeah, fractures all over the place. This does show quite a bit of damage. Well, do you think the poor fellow will ever walk again? I think so. This is a fracture of the shoulder. <laughs> He was hurt a lot worse than we thought. Boy, that's a long fracture. From ankle to shoulder? <laughs> Gentlemen, I have a feeling there's a little hanky-panky here. Oh, no. Couldn't be. How could you think that? Mercy, mercy. You <laughs> fellas. You ain't buying it, huh? It's all your fault. You and your cockamamie x-ray. You don't know a shoulder from an ankle. Can I help it if my Uncle Frank takes a bad picture? Where is the real x-ray? It's out there. It says everything's fine. Ah, that's what I thought. Well, don't be too hard on us, Janet, especially Joe. We just cooked this up hoping to keep you with us. Oh, thank you. I'm very flattered, but I have a commitment. And as long as my patient can be dismissed, I'm afraid I'll have to go. Well, all I can say is you're sure fouling up my plan. Pardon? I was all set to wreck the other ankle next week. <laughs> You're sweet. Well, I, I guess this is it. I just want to say that this has been the happiest time of my life, meeting you and knowing you. I guess I'd better check my office once more just to make sure I haven't forgotten something. Wonderful day. Wonderful. How can you say that? What's the matter with you guys? This is the morning Doc Craig leaves. And there's not a thing we can do about it. We've tried everything. Are you sure? Everything. What are you two getting at? Hi. I was afraid you weren't going to make it. We just got in. In from where? From Riverdale. Oh, Janet knows all about it. She's in there. Well, here. Uh, here's the report. Gentlemen, would you be good enough to help me put my things back into my office? You mean you're not going? You mean you're giving up the job? You ain't going to take it? You bet I am. I want to be here when Kathy Joe's brother arrives. Son, I got to hand it to you. You come up with something even I didn't think of. <laughs> This Sunday, bring in the holiday season in classic style when TV Land's Museum of Television and Radio Showcase presents the vintage 1963 Judy Garland Christmas Special with Mel Torme, Jack Jones, and a very young Liza Minnelli. Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, 
only on TV Land. Now stay tuned for Green Acres, next.